Welcome back everybody. Hope you've been having a good time. Correct. We are not in the garage. We are at my editing desk. And as you've seen from the little intro, we're going to be talking about the 2015 Kona Big Kahuna. I've had a lot of requests to review my own bike, my modifications, my setup, and what I do for bike packing, commuting, my little bit of gravel riding that I do with it. Come along, let's go check out my bike. I bought my big kahuna used in 2017 after it was raced for a few seasons. As you would expect from a carbon 29er cross country bike with Kona's racing pedigree, it's light and smooth at speed, but stiff when you put the power down to it. They say function over fashion, and these felt pads actually stop my cables from digging into the carbon fiber frame while fully loaded. And as you can tell from the Kona badge and the head tube, my bike has seen a fair bit of wear and tear. I've been swapping out parts, either to improve comfort or speed, but most of my upgrades have been because I've just worn something out. As some of you may know, my body's a little beat up from injuries. I use the Jones H-Bar paired with Ergon grips, and I've double wrapped the rest. This style of bar offers a number of hand positions to relieve pressure on the medial and ulnar nerves in your palm. The front hoop also allows you to get aero and headwinds or attach extra lights and gear. Because I ride in traffic, I have mine cut down pretty narrow. This, along with the 45 degree back sweep, does take a little time to get used to on tight trails, but before you know it, they'll become second nature. And don't overlook the little items, like running solid end caps that can take a beating. I think every cockpit should be topped off with a stem cap that has a special meaning for its rider. I swapped the original 2x10 drivetrain for the SRAM Eagle GX 1x with the ultra wide 1052 cassette. Up front, I run an absolute black oval 34 tooth chainring. The elliptical rings have come a long way since the Shimano Biopace released in the 80s. Essentially, it's almost like riding one gear harder with the same effort. I run three different chains that I rotate through every three to four hundred kilometers. I've been clipped into time attack pedals for over 20 years, and I can't believe that more people don't ride with these. They were the holy grail of pedals for cyclocross racing in the 90s. They have great mud clearing capability, generous float, gentle on your knees, and quick to exit when it counts. Brakes. Our lives literally depend on them. We abuse them during long mountain descents on our fully loaded bikepacking rigs. There will always be the debate between hydraulic and cable actuated brakes for field repairs, but for an all around bike, I tend to stick with Shimano brakes as they are simple to maintain and easy to find pads. On this bike, I'm running the simple SLX model. Saddles are like underwear. It's a very personal choice. I typically swap between two primary saddles, my old Salitalia ProLink gel flow that I use for commuting and when I ride in an aero position a lot, and my trusty old Brooks Swift with my own custom center cutout. This saddle is perfect for long tours. Let's get into seat posts. Do you remember the original Thudbuster post from Cane Creek? Yes, they're still made, but the e-silk is the little brother version based on the same design with 20 millimeters of travel. Cane Creek has these available in 27.2 or 31.6 post sizes in aluminum or carbon. I really like this seat post. It smooths out all the bumps that can be a real pain in the butt during an all day ride. Now let's talk forks. To get the most out of one bike, I run an inexpensive carbon 29er fork for commuting and light quick bikepacking trips. Or I'll swap to the original Fox fork, which is a 32 float Evo with 100 mils of suspension. To carry gear, I use Tailfin's fork mount system. This allows me to switch between different bags, cages, or bottles. I found this mount system very versatile and well worth the money. Wheels can be the single most expensive investment we will ever buy to upgrade our bike, and it's the one component that can improve handling and performance instantly. For the most part, I run a set of DT Swiss GR1600 gravel wheels with Maxxis Icon or Specialized Pathfinder Pro tires. In 2022, I was privileged to be selected as an ambassador for light bicycle wheels, and I chose to ride their carbon WR40 rims laced up with industry nine torch hubs. 
I usually have these wrapped with Panaracer Gravel King semi-slick tires for my fast gravel and commuting, but for bikepacking races, I'll run my icons on these wheels. They're very light, stiff, and fast. I made mention of Tailfin earlier. I was privileged to get a full set of racks and bags for long-term testing. Keep an eye out for the review. A little spoiler, I think I'm going to be buying more of their stuff in the future. Now for a little wrap up on accessories. For navigation, I've been testing out the Hammerhead Karoo 2 GPS this year. Keep an eye out for a long term review. For lights, I run an older Phoenix BC30R for commuting. When bikepacking, I use a Gemini Duo 2200 and carry two 4000 milliamp hour batteries. This light can last me two full nights on one battery. For fenders, I keep a Mucky Nuts fender up front and a mud hugger on the rear. Would you believe I have an original lizard skin protector still going strong? Don't forget to protect your bike by registering it with a local theft recovery program such as Project 529 or inquire with your local police department for other programs. And lastly, be safe out there. Hope that was interesting for you to see how I set my bike up and some of the modifications that I've done to it. Remember, it's not about buying all the next big thing that's out there. It's about getting out and having fun. But remember, be safe and we'll see you next time.